Okay, so a lot of people have been wondering what the what the fuck is going on with FX Open since we disbanded the NA team the other day. Um, now I'm going to preface all with this: with uh, FX Open is not disbanding, career is fine, they're not pulling out, anything like that. All right, so don't stress about that kind of stuff. Um, however. There's been a misconception about what the NA team actually is, uh, and there's a couple of things that I wanted to clarify with that is, when we first brought them on board, it was more of a in-development team, like kind of an academy, but not really, because we were in the process of getting them Razor gear and um, getting them access to the Korean clan to practice with our guys if, they, if, if it could happen, and getting them replays and things like that. But over the last like five or six months, it's just turned out to be impossible to get working. Um, simply because like Koreans are against releasing their replays, they don't want to practice with people who waste their time because they're not up to their level, and like there's been like one mist one issue after the other with getting them the razor gear, whether it be shipping issues or um, out of stock stuff and, and shit like that. But um, yeah, so the reason we it eventually was disbanded was because I resigned of it from FX Open as of yesterday afternoon. Uh, reasons for that being very long in detail, so I'm going to try and go through some thought process with as to why. Um, but at the end of the day, the way I can explain it best is I want to enjoy esports again. Um, being hev so heavily involved in a lot of stuff, you st like I just can't enjoy it anymore. Like I can't watch DSTL without worrying about is Lenox screwing up, or is he, um, is the team winning, is the team losing, oh shit, if we lose, we're going to lose sponsorship because we don't have the reach and all that kind of stuff, and when um, you're working so hard to create an environment and want to push esports to the next level, anything that anyone does that you don't agree with, it starts to frustrate you, like you'll see um, events, like so you'll see events that are retrying the exact same things that you've already tested and proven don't work uh, frustrates you, and then you'll see events that are blowing money out of their ass just to like come into the scene, and it, it, it's just not worth it because you've seen it time and time again, and uh, things like that, and it just turned into stress after stress after stress for me, and at the end of the day, I have to look after my own health because I haven't had a day off in like two years. I work two jobs, one being esports. Um, since November, since November last year, I've worked two full-time jobs, one of them including esports. Um, and the direction that FX Open now wants to take the team is something that I don't agree with. I don't think it'll work, but that doesn't mean I'm going to say, "Well, fuck you guys, you're idiots," etc. I'm just going to say, "No worries, good luck with that," but that's not something I'm going to be involved in. Uh, so jumping back to this is going to be like, my, like this is like something for me, just closing off, because I, I don't like being in the limelight very often. Um, I prefer to be that guy pulling the strings and in the shadows and don't really care what other, I, I really just don't care what other people think of me. Um, because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a very logical person, and I'll go with what, uh, what facts show me. And so I started off as a player. Um, I really wanted to get involved in StarCraft, and then all of a sudden... The Southeast Asia scene was getting a lot of tournaments, and there was no casters to do it. I was, I was living right next to an internet exchange, because out here in Australia, you, there's no upload speeds. Very few people can actually stream, because uh, you need an exam and to be pretty close to an exchange to be able to do it. Uh, but So I started casting, and then I was casting a lot of games. Like I was working full-time, coming home, casting for six hours, passing out, doing it all over again for weeks at a time, and I ended up meeting Josh, uh, who was FXO boss, which was quite funny, because I'd just gotten back out, back from a night out, and I was off my face, um, and I saw a message on a message board saying, my company wants to do a $1,000 um, esports event, and I was like, alright, I'll help out with that, messaged him, ended up getting on a Skype call and talking about things, and yada yada, so he brought me on board to do that, and that first event was a fucking disaster. Um, it was so bad, uh, but it led it led at least to starting the team and then doing more invitationals and things like that, bringing some people on board like Railcoon and Dell and Frequency and all that, and that generally just led to 
us ended up going to Korea um, for GSTL, which was probably one of the highlights, even though there were like a lot of struggles uh, out there. Like, I, I was casting GSTL and I got two root canals during that time while I was on camera. It was quite funny because um, Josh was saying <laughs> there was a very, very funny trend in the feedback um, of, of people saying, he doesn't look right today, he looks out of it. And it's like, because I was so high on like painkillers, it wasn't funny. But back then there was no one to really replace um, anyone because it was Wolf by himself. And if I didn't go and do it, he'd be like doing it himself again. Um, we did that. Uh, Really rewarding time, heading, heading out to different events, meeting a lot of people that I hadn't really spoken to and only seen um, at events. And something that I have to give props to the esports community for is, no matter how standoffish people seem, they're always nice people to meet. Um, I've never met someone who's, like, I've actually not gotten along with in esports. So that's always nice. Um, but then I went full time, so I was volunteer with FX Open up until then, and then I went full time. And me and me and Josh were sitting there. Let's let's figure out a way to have a tournament break even monetarily, so that it can run over and over again without the need for sponsorships. And that's when we started the Invitational series, and um, we we ended it with a really big one that we released the stats on it. I wish we would have done it two months later than we did, not in January, February for the. Um, for the ad revenue, but we learned then that it's just not worth it. Um, you, the, without sponsorships, there's no possible way to do that, because we were running, like, I was doing it full time, right? We, we ran that events from replays, most people still don't realize that. Um, <clears throat> and I was casting 12 games a day, every day, seven days a week, to be broadcast on the weekends. And then I was up on the weekends running the event and hitting the ad button and all that kind of shit. <clears throat> and then we had casters in as well, and we had tournament organized and stuff, and it ended up costing like eight grand for that month, not including my salary, by the way, which was quite hefty at the time, because student uni, uni student, massive debt, yeah, I, I pretty much had to say a figure, I can't come work full time unless I get X, and they ended up giving it to me, so that was good. Um, and uh, yeah, we just didn't end up breaking even. Now, we did have a lot of criticism from a couple of people, we're saying, why didn't you just get a lot more volunteers? Uh, and at the same time, like, yes, we could have, but that's not what the whole point of the experiment was about. It was about making an event break even with people actually being paid to do it because not everyone's going to do it volunteer for their full time. If you get volunteers doing an event, it is not a profitable event unless they're all being paid. And it just didn't. So we stopped that one. We, we got access to YouTube Live because we wanted to test out the um, ad revenue on YouTube Live, which kicks the living shit out of Twitch. Um, however, however, that's for a base direct partner. 99% of people aren't base direct partners. They go through affiliates and networks and all that shit. And by the time every single cut comes down, it's just not like it, Twitch does win in that regard. Um, however, for us, we had direct partnerships. So we tested that. There were so many issues with it. We came probably 12 months too early because they didn't have... Uh, the insert ads that were easy, they had a lot of um, manualization of the things that, that Twitch had automi automated and stuff like that. Uh, and it just, and they couldn't, you can't stream to Germany, which is a massive part of the viewership. So, at the end of that, it pretty much came down to everything, contrary to fucking popular belief, I don't know who started this rumor or whatever, FX Open is not run by some rich dude who just wants to fucking be in esports, no. It's actually reportable to the CFO of FX Open Investments, Inc., and he approves everything. Um, so at the time, we'd run like six events, and none of them had broken even, and so he's like, yeah, no, nah, you had your chance. Which is fair enough. Like, thinking back, I was so frustrated at the time, because we were so close to making it ready. Um, but thinking back, it was the right decision to cut, cut doing that. And so we swapped from the running events side of things to a, a more generic and not so, not so much generic, a more successful esports model, which is the sponsorship model and, and doing marketing and things like that, right? And about this time, Josh wanted to step back. Um, he was considering leaving FX Open, the company, not the esports side. Um, so I took over from him as like the CEO, if you could call it that, of the, um, the team. 
and we shifted gears completely. We st we built a sponsorship deck. We went out and we got a whole heap of different sponsors, um, and that went well. But the biggest issue we had came in about January, February, where we started to realize, well, fuck. If we don't do the marketing for the players, they'll never do it themselves, especially in Korea, because. Um, when it comes to drawing value, the, the blanket marketing just doesn't work anymore. So many people ad block, um, and so many people like. If you can think about it, the, if you've got ten thousand people on a stream, but say one hundred of them buy a subscription, and the rest ad block, those one hundred are what counts to your sponsor, right? But in sponsors, like when it comes to sponsors, it's even harder because it depends on how many of those ten thousand people will buy a razor piece of equipment that month, or how many will buy a team shirt or things like that. So you start to realize, well, shit. You can't. You either can't track the value, or when you do, you shit your pants because it's so fucking low, or you scream to high heaven because it's so high. And the the more time that goes on, the the better sponsors are getting at, at seeing how how that works. And that's why you see some teams go like this, right? And you see them go, yeah. And then some teams just go, Poof. and some teams just skyrocket because they've got the fans to actually pay for shit. Um, And we started, oh, started realizing the like the players just didn't want to do that. Like they just didn't want to do it. They just wanted to play the game. And to quote quote Ilya, uh, one of the shareholders of FX Open, we don't fucking play players to to just play a game. We play we pay them to market for us. And I had the choice of either bringing on staff who would market for the players themselves, which we ended up doing. We I I'm quite proud of the staff that we had near the end. Um, but even then, you require some part of kind of cooperation from the players. If a player sits there and goes, "I don't want to, I don't want to do anything but stream. I don't want to do video logs. I don't want to want to do um, news articles. I don't want to like do content or anything like that. I just want to stream and play." Your value is fucking down the bottom. It doesn't matter how many fucking viewers you have, because at the end of the day, it's all about how many people pay for the product. And if you're not doing that stuff, like reviewing a, a sponsor's product, then what's the point in it, right? Uh, and that's something that a lot of teams are starting to realize that sponsors are tightening their budgets because they've started to also know, look at the bottom line that they're getting back in from esports. And that's the biggest thing. And I want to give a shout out to Jason Leg, at least I'm, if I got that name wrong, I apologize. But he called, he, he said something that I agree with 100%, and it was, he's sick and fucking tired of teams coming in, spending a fuckload of money and disappearing because they don't know how to make it break even. And there's two parts to that quote. One is the, that part, the second one is he named a few teams that had come and gone, and then he also mentioned FXO Open as uh, he FXO is a shell of a what it could be, right? And he was right. Like we already knew that, and this the biggest challenge that we we were still fighting up until I resigned is drawing the value out of those players. If the players aren't willing to cooperate with you and then prove yourself to a sponsor before you, they get a pay rise, because what they have now is what you can give them. Um, it's just never going to work, right? Like, I can't count the amount of times I asked the Korean players, just stream six hours a week. I don't care if what you're doing on it, you can be 2v2ing, you can be fucking around, I don't care. Just do it six hours a week, please. Never fucking happen. Ever. I think it happened for one week, and then I had to bug them every single day after that, and they still refused to do it. It just came up with excuses, and after excuses, after excuses. Um... And then after giving me all those excuses, it goes, oh, we need a pay rise. I'm like, what the fuck for? Oh, we won an event. Well, congratulations. We don't take your prize money. Some teams do. Most teams don't anymore. But you got that back already. Like, why the fuck are we giving you a pay rise? Just because you win something doesn't mean more people are going to come in and actually uh, buy your product. Like, does it help? Yes. But it's not the most important thing. Uh, and so... I w I'd spent the last nine months building a platform to do that part for the players. Like, even to the point of uh, logging into their own Twitter accounts and tweeting for them and getting chatbots set up with Google tracking links to see how many people go, like, like how many people click the links and all that stuff. All that stuff sorted for them. And the web new website, which took so long to set up, fuck. Um, so we could actually start pushing content out of it. And. The more we built that system and the more we were about, like, we started to implement it, 
the deep of my heart sank because I started to realize, well, fuck, FX Open Esports is nowhere near as valuable as I thought it was. Um, simply because the more the more data you get, the more accurate you can predict everything, and the players that we had weren't popular enough. Like, to be wanting to stay in career and just win GSL is great from a, from like a player point of view, but from a marketing point of view, like where you need to actually sell them to a sponsor, it's fucking useless. Because you never see them. Like, we had to, like three or four players in code A slash S, whatever, and we'd see them three times a month. That's it. On uh, streaming numbers that are being, like, gradually going down and down. And on top of that, fucking on TV refuses to give out their viewership numbers. It's something that I've, got, I've gotten into screaming matches with them about. I'm like, why the fuck can you sit there and say you're supporting the teams when you're cutting off the biggest part of what helps them make money? Right? Especially when it was on GOM TV player only and not Twitch TV. I didn't have a fucking clue how many people were watching it. I could have made up a number and made like 200,000 people concurrent. And then there'd be no way for sponsors to tell me wrong. Um, it's fucking a lot less than that, obviously. And it, if you... Like, the numbers that I, I've been looking at recently are abysmal. For StarCraft, anyway. And... Uh, when you when you're up against the wall like that and you're trying to push forward and you're trying to push forward and you're starting to make headway you get a lot of confidence and up until maybe three weeks ago we weren't ready to to push out our stuff completely however something's happened something happened in the last few weeks that really just spun everything on its head and that was that FX Open wants to take a different direction with the team that direction is they want to create a, a website, or well, they've already created the website, esfxtv.com. They want to create, turn that into a streaming website like Twitch, but also a news and content stuff like TL and Join Dota and TSM and stuff. But they wanted the teams to be able to push the content to that site. And when I was told they wanted to do that, it they pretty much just like cut myself, like cut me in half because I realized I couldn't do what I needed to do to show value to additional sponsors. And if the focus of FX Open is to build that website, not anything else, you, you can't work on it. Like, th there's no way to make that work. For, and the fact that they <clears throat> wanted to start doing events again, they decided to start doing events again on there, but they'd lost all the staff who'd actually made a very successful events. And those who were left, like me, I'd send all this data in, and then they'd be completely ignored. Um, so it just wasn't worth it. And the nail in the coffin for me was a few days ago. I was told that according to the FX Open board, etc., Baby Knight, Lowly, all those players are still on FX Open. Now anyone with a brain will sit there and go, no, they're on Na'Vi. And you'd be right. Um, they are on Na'Vi. FX Open is a minor sponsor of that team, but it is not Team FX Open. It is Team Navi. And when I realized if they can get that fundamentally so wrong, um, it's just not worth my time. And if I'm working two jobs and getting stressed out and pushing so fucking hard to what we were pushing towards and then to have my legs cut out from underneath me with stuff like that, I'd rather just actually enjoy esports again and be a player, like not really be a player, but be a spectator and not have to worry about the viewership numbers and not have to worry about if my player does well and not have to worry about um, sponsorship negotiations and not have to worry about waking up in the morning and dreading looking at Skype in case something else has gone wrong. Um, and as I spoke to a lot of other people I know and I'm quite close to in esports, uh, until there's more knowledge across the board, it's very difficult to justify working two jobs in a way, at least for me. Like, the, the, here's, here's an example of the, the massive knowledge gap, right? There was an event that was happening and we had offered at the time to cover with a secondary stream. And we offered to use their sponsorship logos or their stuff, promote them on our Twitter or all that kind of stuff, right? Because back then we were pulling in a thousand viewers for a shitty local Adelaide land with not that many good players, or like a Malaysian event with like 20 people, we would get a thousand viewers on that for that, right? 
when this event was like struggling to peak past 400 viewers or something along those lines. So we're like, here, we'll help you out, we'll jump on and we'll do all this for you. And we'll give you all the statistics, we'll give you the unique impressions, the impressions, the geographics, and all that kind of stuff after the event. And I fucking shit you not, the response I got was, I don't see how that's valuable to us. What we need is marketing and money. And that just blew my fucking mind. Uh, and I'm sure it just blew all of yours, because that's the basics of fucking marketing, getting more people to see who you are. So... That's that's that wall that you're you're worried of, like you keep running into, but there's so many people coming in like Jason, like if I got that name wrong, I'm so sorry, but it's just so long ago. Said that he's sick and tired of teams coming in, spending a fuckload of money, and then disappearing because they just don't make money and they got it wrong. And it happens so much more than you think. Um, and even there, after being at the helm of, F of Epic Open Esports for just under a year. I can even tell you, even like, we were doing a terrible job. Not because we didn't know how to do it or the staff didn't want to do it, but because there's so many different factors that you have to look at when it comes to that kind of stuff. Um, it might not be that the fact that, like, it might be like for the first year and a half that Epic Open was around, we didn't even care about anything except brand, like, like just blanket marketing. Um, but then when we did shift gears, we just couldn't get the players to cooperate. And the players who can understand that fact and that can actually push themselves, they will go far. And they don't have to be the best players, and history's proven that. If you're an okay player, or even just a mediocre one, but you have a fan base, you're still more valuable than someone who wins an event, but doesn't talk to anyone, or doesn't stream, or doesn't do anything, except practice, show up on GSL, and win. Um, of course, there's varying degrees to either of those, but so at the end of the day, I didn't agree with the way Epic Seven was going to run it. I didn't see any possible way we could increase the sponsorships and increase the brand as a whole. So I handed in my resignation. I, it was very frustrating to tell Choya that I had left, um, but he understands where I'm coming from, thankfully. Um, I don't know the future of Epic Seven yet. They have to decide. I don't know what... Um, the other staff are deciding to do. I've, of course, told them my reasoning for leaving. Um, and they can make up their own minds because they're all volunteers anyway. They don't have to stay around. Um, especially when they've done such a good job. Uh, so, <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's all that I want to take a break. I want to enjoy esports again. And just even the last day and a half when I've been watching the International, it's had nothing, like, I haven't had any stake in it whatsoever. I've been able to sit down and actually enjoy it. Um, I don't know if that, that sounds weird, but, uh, I really know that sounds weird, but you, you'll have to just bear with me with that point. <laughs> um, I'll take a break uh, from eSports, and then I might come back and consult for a few teams and give them some pointers on how to do things, but it'll be strictly as a consulting point of view. Because at the end of the day, if I look at, like, if I analyze something and I go, this, this, this will make you do better, and then they don't do it, it's not my problem. Whereas right now, if I say, okay, players, we need to do ABC, and then the players don't do it, or they go, give us more money, and like, we don't have it in the budget, I'm like, well, fuck, we're at a standstill, and we're going to lose sponsors later down the road. That's stressful. But whereas, um, whereas you, oh, no, I lost my short. Very thought. Yeah, but if it's not involved, like, if you're not directly involved, it's less stress. And, yeah, that's just how I look at it. Um, I've, I certainly haven't made as many friends in esports as most people, but I, I, I operate on the be honest, um, no matter what the situation, and if you're friends with something, someone and there's something business related or, or work related come up, always have that that divide of, if I'm talking to you about it, like for example, if I'm talking to you about an issue that I saw you do wrong when you were promoting our players because you work for an event, or you do something like that, and I get up to you because for that, that's nothing personal. That's just me saying, boy, the fuck. Um, and I can't remember who said it, but if you're honest with people, you won't have as many friends, but you'll have the right ones. And that's how I operate quite a bit. And I might have made a few enemies land, around, like going up and down the road, but at the end of the day, if, if in my mind you can't 
sit there and have it out and like sit there in a professional capacity and that you say to me, hey, fucking idiot, fix this, and then show me a, a logical reason behind it, um, and I can't even listen to you, and I'm like, no, you're telling me I'm wrong, I, no, no, you don't, you don't do that. That's not productive at all, and I don't want to be involved with it. Like, I don't want to know people like that because they're never going to grow if they can't um, take criticism as harshly as it is or as nice as it is, it doesn't matter. Um, the direct, honest feedback is always the most truthful and the most efficient, and that's the way I roll with it. And if some people hate me for it, I don't care. I really don't. Because um, at the end of the day, I was involved in a very successful, event, like some successful events. Maybe not monetarily, but size-wise, they were quite large. Um, view of view accounts and everything. Um, worked with a team that won GSTL twice, won MLG, like all fucking the long laundry list of events they won. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's that's the way I look at it. It's it's more about I need to enjoy things again, and I can't if I'm constantly being frustrated by that. And by going to more, like just taking time off and then being able to come home at five o'clock and have nothing to do for the first time in years for me, at least today, like I had to do this. I didn't have to do this, but you get my point. Um, it's weird, because I, I'm constantly looking for stress when it's not there today. And I think that's a more healthy life for me. Um, and I would encourage other players or other people to at least take a look at that before you throw away too much money or too much time or pass up on a job opportunity um, in the corporate world or something like that. Um, because even for me, being out of out of IT for one year put me so behind, and I had to do a lot of catch up um, when I when I came back into it. Uh, like, yeah, it, it was insane. And even then, I was still doing the, the esports stuff on the side. I don't, I honestly don't know how I did it. Um, it was it was very stressful on my relationship as well as everything else, and, and my real life friends as well, because I was constantly always stressed out, always angry about something. Or or pissed off because I couldn't get something done because it, it, it out of my hands and I'm being told do this or we we pull your funding and I'm trying to get it done and then it, like players just don't do it or or being being told I'm ripping players off because I'm not giving them what they deserve and that figure is coming out of fucking nowhere um, or based on something offer someone else has given them which like um, history has proven a lot of teams come in spend too much money and then leave. And uh, we were directly involved in one of those teams recently um, in the League of Legends. Well, not, not the League of Legends team, but we were partnered with one for like a week or so, which was very similar to that. Um, and it, it really does bump up the inflated prices to the point where players start going, well, I, I can get this. Or you hear, like, everyone's always going to up their salary or, like, say, I oh, earn more than you actually do and stuff like that. And then it gets around and, like, I bet Korean players who are midline Korean players ask for four grand a month, um, which is unheard. Like it, that's way too high um, to be sustainable, um, especially if you don't do the marketing and stuff. Some players are worth it, absolutely. Some are ninety-nine um, percent just purely because if I spend four grand a month for you, how am I getting that four grand? Not in not in sales, but in profit for all my sponsors. And of course, there's going to be that that gap of you're not sure exactly who it is and like that kind of stuff. But um, yeah, uh, that and the news I've heard from Korea recently does not make me feel good whatsoever. Um, and I've always been one of those. If any game cons tries to consider itself an esport and like tries to push itself to be that and gets events going and is successful and starts getting a viewership, I'm quite happy for that game. I've never been one of those. League of Legends sucks, Starcraft's better, or Dota 2 sucks, never, never one of those. If everyone can fucking have their own personal likes and dislikes. If anyone's successful, that's great for them. Um, but that being said, the stuff that's probably going to be breaking career pretty soon is pretty disheartening for Starcraft 2. Um, but then again, you look at the landscape and you can't really blame people for the decisions they're going to do. Um, because at the end of the day, sponsors are businesses. They have to make money. 
they got to put it where they want to put it back. Now, that being said, it might change in the next few months if, if these these companies decide to, to go a different way to what they to what I'm hearing anyway. But yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm trying to think that I miss anything. Yeah, I do wish the guys in FX Open all the best. Like like I was saying at the beginning, they're not disbanding. They're still there. The funding's still the same. Um, as far as I'm aware, all their sponsors are staying with them. Um, all their current ones, and, and then when they, the, the contracts expire, they'll renegotiate, or whoever they can get to fill my place will renegotiate, or whatever. And we'll go from there. But other than that, going to take some time off. Might consult for some teams in the awesome organizations when I come back. But other than that, I'm going to actually enjoy gaming. And yeah, I'll, I'll answer some questions. Like I'll, I'll pop in every now and then and answer some questions from people if they want to know. Like if I wasn't clear, because I I didn't script this. I was just like fucking. Bleh. I needed to get it out um, and explain a couple of things. But yeah, good luck to all the Epic Open guys. Like I've been very close with Choyer and Lenok and all those players there, so I always want to see them succeed. Um, but I don't think I'm in the position to help them do that anymore. It's going to be more up to them more than anything else, and I wish them the best and all that kind of stuff, so I look forward to actually being a spectator again, and enjoying enjoying watching the game, and as of right now, I'm actually staying up late to watch the International, which is going to be fun, but anyway, thanks for your time, guys, if I was unclear on anything, I'll, I'll keep it up to date, and I'll, I'll clarify it, but, um, but yeah, have fun.